Hi there, welcome to Urban Rider. Today, it's something of a throwback. If you remember this guy from the channel, then there's a chance you might remember these guys, the Biltwell Gringo and Gringo S, because I think they were pretty much the last standalone review I did some years back. And here they are in their 2206 variant. So 2206 is the new safety standard for helmets, all helmets being manufactured from this point have to adhere to this standard. You can no longer manufacture under the old one, even though you still see helmets on the market and perfectly legitimately being sold through. All helmets now have to meet these regs. And this is no mean feat. Really, evolving a helmet is no different to having to design a brand new one from scratch to meet the requirements. So everything has to kind of change and be reconfigured and considered slightly. So in saying that, those familiar with the Biltwell Gringo, does this still meet all the same briefs? Because 2206 is more stringent, we usually get slight size and weight increases accordingly. And the Biltwell Gringo has always been very, very popular in our segment because it's such a pure, simplistic, lightweight, compact design that works really well. It's classical, but it does also work well on the kind of modern retro fusion that a lot of riders on the urban scene go for. And they were way ahead of the curve. They were doing this long before everybody jumped on the bandwagon. So now they're entering the marketplace with a lot of competition, whereas they used to be somewhat in a segment and price point of their own. So all that considered, does the new helmet live up to the standard set by its predecessor and will it be as popular? I think so. I think they've done a very good job. First and foremost, if you look at it and if you compare to their predecessor, the 2205 variant, then yeah, it basically looks exactly the same. The weight has slightly increased from 1400 to 1600 grams in the S variant. So here today we're reviewing basically the Gringo, that is to say this without the hinged fixed visor and the studs on the front. That's the Gringo plane. And then we have the Gringo S, which is the one here with the fixed visor mechanism. Now we don't have one of the brand new Gringo standard versions here with us because uh, the samples didn't arrive in time. It's exactly the same helmet. So rather than bombard you with two separate reviews of basically the same thing, we're gonna talk about them both as one here. If you wanna see an illustration of what the predecessor looked like in the normal gringo then that is it and as you can see apart from the visor system it's the same thing and as you can see this being the previous version the differences in terms of the profile and the shape and everything are virtually unnoticeable you have to really get very very close there are other differences to note apart from the weight itself which going from 1400 to 1600 grams is something of a small increment is perfectly in keeping with what we've seen with most helmets according to the new 2206 transition they do tend to go up a little bit and 1600 is by no means heavy but it's by no means the lightest either but this coming in at the price point it does still at the more affordable 2206 side of the helmet spectrum on full face helmets i think still very reasonable and it's certainly not going to make you two inches shorter in stature if you wear this it's not a particularly heavy helmet all things considered so shell size wise they have made some changes they used to just have two which was a little bit of a limitation there was the extra small small and medium shell and there was a large, extra large and 2XL shell. And that meant if you were the medium, therefore on the upper side of that smaller shell, it started to get really quite constrictive because you had this small shell and a very, very small EPS liner inside it. And it wasn't always that comfortable if you didn't get the fit bang on, if it wasn't right for your head. Now they have three shell sizes, which makes a really big difference. So we have extra small and small, medium and large and extra large and 2XL. So particularly the mediums, this is a big, big improvement. It gives you more space to play with. It's therefore far more accommodating in its head shape than it used to be. And these are real material plus points. We used to get quite high return rates with the previous version. We described it as more of an intermediate fit than the standard for the market in Europe, which is intermediate oval. That is to say, fitting people with a bit of an oval head shape, but somewhere towards rounded too. This intermediate was more of a rounded shape than the sort of norm, if you like. Here, if you used to fit the previous version, the 2205 or even the DOT version before that, you will still fit this absolutely fine. However, there's a chance that if you didn't get on with the previous version and you like the helmet, you should try the new one because I didn't and I do get on with the new one. However, I have to adjust slightly for the sizing. Here's where it gets a little tedious and we're quite used to having to do this. We have overwritten the manufacturer's size guide as we did with the previous version. So if you check out Biltwell's US site, they say that they've done that themselves from the previous variant and come up with a new size guide, but we don't agree with it. We think it is too small. So on that basis, they say a medium is a 57 and a 58. Now I am a 58 and I cannot get on with the medium at all. 
However, going up one centimeter on the size guides and adjusting it accordingly so that the large is a 58 and 59, things are completely different and it's far, far more comfortable. So I'm wearing the large, it fits me really nicely as someone with actually a slightly more oval head shape, it's accommodating enough. Built well this time round, they've also come up with the idea of incorporating customizable fit. So you can actually accessorize with the cheek pads uh, as well as playing around with the washboard removal in aligning too. So you should be able to get a perfect fit. Those accessories, if you like, the customizable cheek pads aren't available on the day of launch, i.e. when this video goes live, but they will be within about a month. And the same applies for the visors and other accessories and peaks and so on, which Builtwell have always done very well with because again, they're affordably priced. So looking at the helmet itself in isolation, if you weren't familiar with it, let's go through the features. So we have an injection molded anti-scratch C approved visor, which borrows from the mechanism of the lane splitter, which has always been better, it's one of the other models in their range, um, than the Gringo in terms of the way the ratchet system works. It's far more sort of dependable and steady, so you can go along even at speeds, and this is not gonna move from whatever position you orient it to. That's a really nice thing. You can also accessorize these hinge plates. So if you wanted to take them off and put on gold ones on this color, for example, you can do that. There's a nice color range from launch as well, which I'll flash up now. Uh, so plenty to choose from there. You have this sort of safety mechanism to keep the visor in place. Um, the, uh, one of the, the one usability gripe I have with this helmet, having ridden with it briefly, is that this isn't the most ergonomic system. So your thumb can easily go under that, but to sort of push it out, even off the bike with my thumb, not a glove on, it's hard work. I mean, this really should be further round. It's definitely not a deal breaker. You can still release it with one and push it up with the other. You just develop a slightly different technique, but it's just, it's one of those small things, just uh, sort of slightly annoying, could easily have been avoided. The other thing I found was that the uh, mediums all had the popper um, slightly higher than the larges, which meant sort of locating it when you're doing that last piece of the puzzle and doing up your chin strap is um, somewhat a little bit more fiddly than in the uh, other sizes for some reason. But again, those are the two criticisms I have of it and they're fairly minor. Other criticisms people would level at it will simply be the lack of sort of technical spec on it. So we don't have the best rainproof seal for the visor. We don't have lots of ventilation. We don't have pin lock or anything like that not pretending it does. And as I've never seen anyone commuting with this on a sort of cold, wet, autumn or winter morning. So I wouldn't expect people to kind of have those complaints because in practice, that's not what this helmet is for. It's for high days and holidays, looking great and having fun on the bike when it's nice out. And it does that very, very well. So the pricing, which I know is definitely gonna be of concern as well, is also pretty good. So the helmet was always at this lower end of the sort of pricing spectrum among the helmets that we would tend to offer. So. In the standard non-visor included version of the Gringo, we were hitting sort of 149 in the plain colors. That now goes up to 195. So a little bit of a jump there, but still sub 200. And in the Gringo S, so the versions that we have here, we go from uh, 189 up to 215. So actually sort of less of a jump on the standard version. And I think pretty reasonable. It puts it in a competitive price territory. If you check out the other helmets of the 2206 variation on our website, there's some really strong contenders, but this definitely stacks up against them still. So I think it's really good for you guys out on the market. And we would love to know what you think about everything I've mentioned so far about the re-release of the Gringo. Also check out the other review for the Gringo SV. That's a sort of sister product, also completely new. It takes the Gringo format and sort of remodels the profile with the vents primarily on the front. A little bit more money for the same kind of thing, um, but that's something if you maybe did want a little bit more ventilation, definitely worth checking out Tim's excellent review of that. So again, sort of getting up and close with the helmet itself. We have these removable washable hypoallergenic liners, which have always been really, really comfortable with Biltwell once you know you actually get on with the right size. So it's nice that they can come out. You've got a double D-ring system, the most secure way of doing up chin strap. And you've also got nice sort of faux suede lining to the bottom of that as well, which you didn't used to get a nice premium little addition there. The helmet definitely feels, I would say overall, slightly more sort of solid, robust, uh, premium in some senses. So all in all, our verdict is that this is a pretty high scoring effort from Biltwell. They've taken their time to come up with a good, credible 2206 variant of the helmet. The compromises to meet that haven't been so large that the helmet no longer has its original USPs of being nice and compact and simple in its execution. They still have all those things. In some cases, actually, they have evolved for the better as well when it comes to some of the more sort of premium quality feel and fitments to the accessories particularly. 
So this stands to us to be a pretty good release. We'd love to hear from you. Stay tuned for more video reviews of the world's finest riding gear. There's a lot happening at Urban Rider over the coming months. Can't say too much now, but it's definitely worthy of your interest. So see you soon. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.